Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an interesting case study in the shop. It's a 2002 Dodge Caravan 3.3 liter V6 and the customer complaint, again, kind of weird. She says when she goes to use her turn signal, A, the turn signal doesn't work and B, the cluster goes dead, meaning all the gauges you know, go to zero or something like that. No other complaints. The radio still works, HVAC works, wipers are fine, headlights are fine. Just when she uses the turn signal, the cluster, that's it, dead in the water. So let's try to duplicate the symptoms and then diagnose it. So here it is, 2002, back when they made simple, honest vans. No frills. See your key on. We'll turn the backlight on. Well, half of it works. <laughs> Prindle and everything. Let's try the turn signal. How many miles does this thing have on it? Ooh, 214,000. Not too bad. Let's see, left turn signal. Boom. Cluster's dead. The turn signal itself. Let's see if it actually works. Nope, don't see anything there. Don't see anything here. She says that if you turn it off, sometimes it takes a while for the cluster to come back. See, keys on, cluster's dead. Uh, same with the hazards. They look very dim, the little blinkies, and we have no turn signals. We do have brake lights. You can see the brake lights work. But other than that, so our illumination came back. Let's see, key on. Nope. Let's see, so illumination's on, turn signal. No turn signal. Okay, make sure the see does the HVAC work? Yeah, I think the radio works. Cool. Let's see the HVAC. I have to fire this thing up. Oh, there you go. Yep, HVAC works. The cluster is completely dead. Next step. Yeah, we could plug in a scanner, but for this one, I have a feeling that it's going to be a power or ground issue. So we have to see what the turn signal uh, circuit looks like and how it ties into this cluster. All right, BBB Industries to the rescue, fantastic wiring diagrams. First page for the turn signals. So we have our multifunction switch. That's the actual stock. And our hazard button is down here. And it all goes to the body control module. So we have our inputs and then we have drivers. So this body control module, it looks like directly powers up right front part you know right front turn signal left front and if we keep going down it has separate drivers for the rear turn signals now we have the accept built up export whatever that means and it goes to the left lamps now it's a good idea in these cases to look at the ground. So this is G302. That's for the rear signals. G102 for the fronts. And next, how does this tie into the instrument cluster? So here's our instrument cluster. It looks like it's fed through fuse 24, 20 amp fuse. 
comes in here, powers up our instrument cluster. And it has a ground at G200. Okay. And, well, I mean, it goes through, let's see here. So we have the PCI bus. This is an old Chrysler single wire comm system. So the instrument cluster is on the network. And the VCM is also on the network. I guess we don't care about the rest of this unless it has powers and grounds hiding somewhere <laughs> further down like we learned on the uh, Dodge Dakota case study. Uh, just take a quick look through the entire diagram. Okay, and there's a ground at G200. Okay. So that was our instrument cluster. So my guess is, just from the symptoms, is that somehow that power feed or the ground is tied to the BCM and when uh, we request the turn signals to turn on, that's a pretty high current circuit. So something's being overloaded. We either have a weak power or a weak ground uh, on the BCM or the instrument cluster or both if they're tied together. So that's the thought process for now. Next diagram is the more global view of the body control module. <clears throat> and that would be, oh, let's see, where did I put it? Right here. So this is 16 pages long. So first we have our power feeds. Fuse 19, fuse 20, fuse 24. That's interesting. So that is a shared fuse between a power feed to the BCM. It says hazard, so it has something to do with the turn signals for sure. And our instrument cluster power feed, that's also a 24, uh, fuse number 24. So that's shared. And if the BCM is you know really pulling on that circuit to try to turn on the turn signals, having a massive voltage drop, and that shuts off the cluster. So that's you know one theory. Uh, it's, I mean, other than that, we see back to our body control module. Where is the ground in this thing? Uh, let's keep going slowly here. Ignition switch. Da da da. Looking, I'm just looking for a ground. There's a ground. It goes to G301. That's not the same as the instrument cluster. And any more grounds on here? We have two more grounds at G301. Why can't they just put them all on one freaking page? And keep going here. Panel lamps driver. Uh, instrument panel switch bank, headlamp switch. It's a pretty long diagram. Just want to make sure we don't miss anything. Lesson learned. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff on here on this BCM. I'm sure we don't have many of these things. This is a, a base model van. Multifunction switch. Chime driver, so it also controls the chime, and the chime got weak. You know, first it was ding, 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 and then after I tried the turn signals, it was kind of like, wah, wah, wah. so just another clue to a common power or ground problem. And we're, yep, we're at the bottom. And you notice that we didn't see a wire going to the actual indicators for the turn signals on the dash. That is in a separate page for some reason right here. So the BCM also controls these. 
right turn indicator driver, left turn indicator indicator driver, and also the chime, and that goes all, uh, to our instrument cluster. There are the bulbs, and those blink dimly. Okay. So, what's the plan of attack? I want to focus on the easiest thing to get to and on all data we can let's see here see where this BCM lives so the BCM I'm most concerned about this Fuse 24 circuit uh, we could even go to the integrated power module which is just a fancy name for a fuse box before they went to the totally integrated power module which is a complete disaster these things are still fuses and relays that you can access we could go there and see if we have you know if that fuse is alive and check for green crusties do a visual inspection you know don't want to waste time and then the next step would be if that's good go right to the BCM itself and check this wire two on connector C1 it's a brown and red so just for kicks we can see where the BCM lives oh man internal failure no BCM messages component descriptions locations let's see here located in the passenger compartment attached to the bulkhead underneath the left side of the instrument panel so there's your parking brake lever and the BCM should be fairly accessible but let's check the fuse 24 first and see if we have power on there we can also check fuse 19 and 20 to make sure all the fuses are good to power up this BCM alrighty got the cover off of our IPM and looking at the cover itself we have a 40 amp BCM number one 40 amp BCM number two and here's the hazard LP 20 amp fuse so what I'm gonna do is just turn on the hazards we have our dim lights and no turn signals here we can do a quick wiggle test on those two and then I'm going to pull this fuse out and see what happens to our indicators see they turned off so that is indeed the right fuse and it is indeed good even though those contacts in there look a little, little crusty Okay, and we have our dim lights again. So that at least tells me that the power is here. We can check it with a test light, make sure it's nice and bright. We have to go towards the BCM uh, as suspected. Just to double check with the test light on this 20 amp fuse. There's side one. There's side two, and that just proves that the power to the fuse and through the fuse is good. Let's go inside the van. The BCM sounds like it's trying to do something. It's this big box right here. Um, what we could try to do is locate that main ground for the BCM, see if that's easier to check than uh, all the power feeds. And because if the ground for the BCM isn't good then you know it's trying to do stuff like switch the drivers and it just can't so if that G301 if that's easily accessible we could go there alright well since the BCM is easy to get to I just jotted down the, all the power feeds and all the grounds so here we are the wiring colors and you know what fuse they come from and what ground they go to so 
all in one spot. Let's just check these uh, with a test light or voltmeter, doesn't matter. And we'll go from there. But sure enough, after waiting a little bit, the cluster is back online. I am just going to gently wiggle this harness and see if So we definitely need to go towards these wires and check them one by one. All right, here's the setup. I got the panel off for a little better visual access. The top connector has our fat power wires going to it. See the white and red, the brown and red. So let me check those with my bright test light. I'll do one on camera, but it's it's kind of a tight fit. To get in here with a probe, let's see, there's there's one, super bright lights, using the full 4 amp, I guess we could do 4 amp like this, that was 5 amps, so 4 amp test light, so let's uh, start checking these off, fuse 20, 40 amp, white and red, check, these are all on C1, P, Let's see, P1, P2, P5, P7, they all have the red stripe. And the only ground on there is C1 pin 3. So let's keep going here. If I can get a visual of these guys. Pretty, pretty good visual. Alright, next up is the brown and red. I can't see anything. Ooh. I can hear the BCM doing something and I'm not getting a test light. That's it. This is brown and red. Let's check the other ones. That one's nice and bright. I wow, that was lucky. Second power feed I checked. <laughs> now which pin is that? So if the white and red, you can hear it coming, trying to come back to life here. The uh, brown and black, you guys probably can't see anything. There you go. So the one in the corner, upper right, white and red, that was pin one. Check. We can get a pin out just to be 100%. So the brown with the red, oh, I'm sorry, brown with the black, or black and tan, I guess. That is C1 pin three. That's a ground. So that's pin three. Okay. So I guess pin two. Is there a pin two? There it is. There it is, that makes perfect sense. So this one is bad. And look at that, fuse 24, 20 amp. That fits perfectly with our theory because that fuse also feeds the cluster. So let's go back to the diagram. We found our problem. We could check the rest of these. Let's do, let's do a grounds check just while we're here. So if I connect the test light across the white and red and the black and tan, I guess we could rig that up just a second. All right, here's a, a grounds check. I got a connector stuffed on that black and tan wire. I'm just gonna touch the neighboring white and red because we know that's a good power feed. And... Oh yeah, there we go, bright lights. So we just proved that this ground right here, C1 pin 3, black and tan, is good. And that proves that G301 is good. So we don't even need to check these two guys. How cool is that? I mean, obviously there could be a wiring break somewhere between here and G301, but G301 itself, that stud or whatever, is fine. Again, we already know the problem Let's chase this guy from the fuse box to our BCM.